Oh. Apparently the manual's not part of the game. So you guys don't get to see the manual while I do. Alright. Well, I'll just deal with being the only person who gets to see the manual. Um. Yeah, well, let's, let's try the game and just see what happens. I'm gonna need the manual. Alright. Diagnostic self test. Do you want to install something called I586 or no? Um. I586? Force I586. Install I586 on 64 bit machine if true. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think so. Okay. Interesting. Move up, down, move up, down, move up, down. Well. Stop. Okay, so this initializes values. And you can go quickly and just get the output values. Um, oh! Communication failure, huh? So, what's the big communication failure here? Let's go back up. Read a value from in.x and write it to out.x. Um, so here's in.x, here's out.x. And here's my first time playing TIS 100, so maybe either I'll need to read the manual or have somebody clue me in. So here's in.x. Um, oh, I can just type arbitrary stuff here. Okay, so that's how we issue commands. Um, so step one. Okay, so what's the big problem? In.x is getting run, uh, set into out.x, right? No. Okay, can I go back to um, the main menu? Okay, so this is apparently assignment one. Specification Editor. Okay, so yeah, I can create my own puzzles. Um, and I can go back to the list of puzzles. Um, and there's apparently no delete button here, so it's not like I can like delete all my progress. Even though I didn't really progress anywhere, so... Um, but yeah, the deal is I want the value from in.x to go down to out.x, and the value from in.a to out.a. Um, so, okay, yeah. The A box doesn't do anything. Um, let's try this command here. Well, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Um, oh, I see. In.a interfaces through here. Okay, so once I figure out the challenge on the left, once I figure out the language in which all this is written, um, I can progress on the right side. This move up, comma, down isn't entirely accurate. So, <coughs> now I get to consult 
the manual, right? Um, all right, so. Command MOV. So let's take a value from, um, let's see. MOV accepts two commands, source and destination. Okay, uh, it's a pretty limited instruction set. And so, Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so this is all pretty much assembly code. Um, ah, do I have to make a loop? Or can I assume that a command will be run over and over? Yeah, I was sure, but that involved manual effort. I'm using a different plugin now. Okay. So, when I step this program, 51 goes to 51, 62 goes to 62. All these things are getting written out correctly. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, we're comparing expected output to actual output. I get it, I get it. Um, so, puzzle is to move from uh, top over here. And top over here. That's what's wrong here. was pretty self-explanatory, you just had to take the time to understand what the objective was. There's no hand-holding in this game. And just go. Solved it. That was easy. Ish. Okay. Puzzle 2. Read a value from in.a, double it, write to out.a. Uh, here's the trick, is that you have to do this, like, um, where's out.a? Here's out.a. So if I just say move up, down, like we used to do, So if I do this, you'll note that the expected values don't at all match up with um, the actual outputs. So the trick is that prior to executing a move command, um, wait, is there? Uh, any is a pseudo port. Last is a pseudo port. Anyhow. So yeah, I have to make a loop. Um. Yep, yep, yep. So there's a register by the name of ACC, apparently. Um.
Yeah. Oh, ACC is the accumulator, of course. So yeah, we'll move. Um, okay, we have to stop the simulation. Move into the accumulator. And then to double it, you add within the accumulator. You add the accumulator, and then move from accumulator um, to this direction. So if we run, we see this takes some more cycles to run and stuff. But yeah, we get the correct output. Now this takes 160 cycles to execute. There are faster ways to do it. Like here, here's a benchmark for another solution. Um, so, let's see if we can optimize this a bit. Um, is there a way that I could... Um, that's interesting. Oh, each one of these has its own accumulator. That's the deal. Oh, I get it, I get it. So... This might look familiar, right? Uh, let's see if this works. Um, oh, hang on, wait. Yeah. Yeah, getting all this to sync up would be quite a nightmare, actually. Um, there are ways to do it, but recognize that if I like shuffle one command to the left and one to the right and one down or something, uh, I'm not going to get the desired results. There's ways to do this faster, of where the doubling is offloaded, um, but it's not obvious how to do this. So yeah, I'll just stop here and go back uh, and try the next puzzle. Because there's always room to improve. Alright, read valves from in.a and in.b. Write difference to out.p. Write other difference to out.n. Okay. Where are, okay, I see that at the bottom there's out.p and out.n. Um, uh, so, yeah, you have to keep track of both differences. Um, <laughs> you write the value of the ACC register to the right port, to the left, okay. I'm curious how I can cross the wires here and still make it work. Um, yeah, this, this is all assembly and microarchitecture and stuff. I um, would not expect anybody to be familiar with this. Um, I mean, I get the concept. It's just uh, figuring out how would you accomplish this with the actual hardware, it's, as opposed to saying theoretically it's doable. Um, okay, there's this debug. What else? Is there anything else? Okay. I see. So you can um, subtract values from a direction in doing subtraction. So, I mean, yeah, I want to 
somehow get the one difference communicated down this way. I don't know which way I'm going to send the other difference. But this is getting much more complicated because um, there's, this bus is not working. So this is just down. I can't use that. Um, there's some kind of static memory in it. Uh, or at least it's immutable. Um, so to actually figure out what this thing does, I would have to send data into it and see what comes out. Oops. I'm gonna move from top to left. Uh, move from up to left. Add. Yeah, it takes the value, sticks it in the accumulator. Accurate, are we? <laughs> Got one value correct because I forgot to reinitialize between. Um, also, these didn't match up. That's cool. That's so cool. So, uh, maybe these are synchronous. Maybe not. Yep, 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 so... Yeah, I have to reset uh, the value of the... Uh, in there each time I restart the loop. Uh, so... How do I set the value of the accumulator? Oh, just move zero to accumulator. And there we go. Okay, at least got one set of outputs correct. And, um... Yeah, so I have to do something similar in moving numbers the other way here. Okay. But yeah, the fact that I'm able to do no ops um, and intersperse instructions is pretty cool. I do the same thing in parallel here. Add up. Uh. Oh, hang on. Okay. So. Right. Here I'd have to sub left and then move ACC down. And this requires an additional instruction in here to move. Um, oh. Oh, okay, okay. I get it, I get it. I've got to move off the values. In a way, I've got to, like, take turns propagating values. That's tricky. Wait, no, not the... S yeah, I, that's the problem. Uh, 
I mean, I could show you exactly what's going to happen. Um, Yeah, yeah, I get that that's not valid. Um, so, how do I do this? I need a way to offload values. Um, Unfortunately, there's no way to write both to the accumulator and move. Oh, hang, hang on, I got a save command. Okay, well that's the easy way, let's stick with that. Um, oh, there's an even easier way here. I get it, I get it. Um, okay, so... Uh, add up. Uh, right. Um, is there a way to negate the value that's in the accumulator? Because that would be cool. That would simplify all of this. Ah! Neg negates it. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to immediately subtract the value that's in the upper register, um, add the value that's on the right, and here we're going to do a no op. Actually, I don't need to get this fancy, do I? No, I don't. Um, although it's cool. So, okay, here's what we're going to do, add up, move, uh, accumulated value to down, move, accumulated value to the right. And start with three no ops. Um, I just add one no op over here. Nope, nope, nope. Um, this is the lazy way to do it, by the way. Uh, sub left. And then move the accumulator value to the out position. Um, well, okay, so down here I can reset. Um, there needs to be a zero command. Where is my zero command? I mean, I could move zero to the accumulator. That just sounds incredibly goofy. I guess that's how I do it. Move zero to accumulator. And then over here I move zero to accumulator. Uh, yeah. And up. So right. Wait, wait. Yeah, something's not entirely correct here. We're going to assume synchronous data transfer, even though that's really not assumable. Um, move up to left. Move from accumulator down. 
up, down, yeah, okay, this, this should work. Let's try it. Hey, it worked for one value. Alright. Um, let's try that again. Alright, now there are more efficient ways to do all of this, by the way. In case you were curious. It's entirely doable. Um, and fewer instructions. Okay, at least in terms of cycle count I didn't do too bad. I expected to do a lot worse. Um, yeah, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Um, the shortcut is that I was able to negate the one value and just move it along. Um, is there any way I can improve this? I don't think so. Well, not without fundamentally changing how it works. But yeah, rather than computing two differences, I just take the one difference, move it over here, and transmit its inverse. Uh, so let's go back. Okay. Read a value from in. So I guess there's one input. Write value to g if n's greater than 0. Or write 1 to g if it's greater than 0. Write 1 to e if it's equal to 0. L if it's less than 0. And when a 1 is not written, write a 0 instead. Well, that sounds pretty easy. Um, But this is just testing that you have read the manual, which I kind of have. Kind of haven't. Um, okay. So we need to um, move from the left to there. Uh, from accumulator to write. Oh, I can actually copy these instruction sets instead of, like, typing them out. That's cool. <laughs> you see the Cards Against Humanity email? Oh, what have they done now? They have... Um, they further up their price? They have a Black Friday deal uh -huh. um, in which they have a product that is called Give Cards Against Humanity $5.00. You give them five dollars and they give you nothing. That's excellent. <laughs> Dude, how many of those have you bought? Dude, that sounds like such a great deal. I know, right? <laughs> um so so so. Yeah. I wonder how many people purchased it. <laughs> yeah, I bet some people are buying into it. Almost forty two thousand. Jeez. That's excellent. I'm curious if they'll actually go through with it. Um, no, they give you nothing. Yeah, no, I'm just curious if they'll actually accept those funds. Uh, they have a checkbox that says, I understand I'm paying Cards Against Humanity $5 and receiving nothing in return. Alright, let's take this fragment out of the manual. Oh, I can't select text out of the manual. Bar. Um, so if greater than zero, pop, okay. I've got to add some. Oh, I can actually navigate this at the keyboard too. Excellent. Start. Good that this game has decent keyboard controls. Because uh, otherwise, this would be pretty much a pain. Um, oh, hang on. I don't need to do all these comparisons here. Um, zero, down. Move 
one down. Uh, yeah. Uh, what can I do here? So we're going to say... Um, oh, jump less than zero negative. Okay, grab that whole block, move it down here. Uh, okay, and do we have a jump equal to zero command? <laughs> uh, oh, we do have a jump equal to zero command. Why is why is what for like Java development kit eight the version string is one point eight? Yes, I don't understand that. But it's because it it's Java one point eight. Also, it turns out that the command is Java single dash version. Oh, that doesn't make sense. It's non-conforming with um, I understand Linux that. standards. I understand that. <laughs> All right, let's give this a whirl. Hey, first try. I'm good at identifying positive, negative, and zero numbers. And with that said, I bet my audience is a lot closer to zero, but it is positive. We do have members in our audience. Um, they probably don't understand assembly at all, but Eh. Maybe I need to try a different game. Um, so I guess I should explain the solution just a little bit. Um, so we move the data from the in data bus all the way down here. And then in each of these um, CPUs execute commands. Um, one on the right says, if I have a negative number, jump to the negative label and execute the commands that follow negative. The last command is jump back to the start of the program. Um, actually, I think it jumps back to the start even if I don't have those commands there. Yeah. Yeah, regardless. Um, now let's try removing the jump command and see, like, how does this behave? Because I think that last jump command um, is not necessary because they dumbed down this game a bit. Um, but we transmit the number through all three CPUs, and if we have a positive value, one goes out here. If we have a zero value, go, one goes out here. And a negative value, one goes out there. Yeah. So I was able to eliminate an instruction just based on assumptions about how the registers work, or how the CPUs work. There might be a more ideal way to do this. Oh. There almost certainly is. Um, awesome. Huh. Okay. Apparently that's the high score. I'm not doing too badly then. Um, yeah, let's take this one. Read values from A and B. Right. Read a value from S. Write A. Uh, write in dot a when s is equal to negative one. Write in dot b when s is equal to one. Write the product or no the sum of those two when s is equal to zero. Okay, and I'm writing just to out. Um, okay. I'm thinking I just moved the data along down this way. Um, so the trick, it wants you to keep track of both A and B. Um, so first, I have to um, uh, 
move that. Am I able to push things into the backup register? B A K. Or is that not accessible? Yeah, it's only accessible through the commands save and swap. It cannot be re read or written directly. Okay. Um, I just want problems that can be parallelized and show off my awesome assembly skills. Um, Oh, so I'm going to need another... No, I don't need to start. Yeah, I do. I'm going to just start label. Um, okay. Oh, hang on. I don't need the final jump start there. It's going to have to go prior to the positive instruction. And say... Uh, this is where things get tricky. Oh, there's... Okay, I see an opportunity for parallelization here. Um, I think. Uh, but let's do it without any tricks first. Let's just get something that works. Oh, I don't need two registers for this. Okay. So, yeah, if we have a negative value, um, move from right to down. If we have a positive value, uh, oops, sorry, we move from left to down if we have a negative value. Positive value, move, move using the assembly command move from right to down. And if we if they're equal, uh, we write their sum. Um, so if we jump greater than zero, positive. Jump uh, less than zero, negative. And if we have a value that's equal to zero, we need to have their sum. So we uh, move left into the accumulator, we add right, and then move the accumulator down. Um, and this just moves up right, and this moves le up left. And this moves up down. And just transfers the data across the data buses. Now there are better ways to do this, but this works. Um, sometimes. Uh, you know, when I remember to put in the instruction to say clear out the accumulator between launches, it tends to work better. Um, no, okay, how did this fail though? I'm curious. So step, step. Um, okay. So out here we've got value of minus 13 that just got printed. Um, we got a value of 7 that's being held here.
Okay, so this is my first failure, so I got a 7 instead of a 6. Um, where did that 7 come from? Number 3 is positive. Um, and A and B here are in lockstep, which is good. Um, wait, why does this have a 7 going this way? And then this has a 6 coming in. Yeah, there's a timing bug here. Um, something timing-wise is not right. <laughs> oh, wait, does the ad command not not withdraw the value from the register. Um, Do I need to vacate the old value there? Nope, that's not it. That's not it at all. Um, so what gives? So, oh, I need to read values out of both registers regardless. Okay. That's the deal. Um... There we go. Um, man, it's a lot of instructions for one box, isn't it? Victory! Okay, I got a solution that works. Now let's optimize it. So, yeah. This is the whole algorithm in a box. And it does exactly what's stated in the upper left corner says if we have a positive value, return the value of B. If we have a negative value, return A. Else return their sum. That's what this set of instructions does. Um, in fact, rather than try to optimize this, I'm going to leave this B. And I'm going to um, try in a different register here a different way of doing this program. So I think there is a faster way to execute this. Well, I don't think I know there is. Um, I'm going to try to show off. Wait, can I not copy a value? I'm just curious what happens if I do this. Um, If I try to copy a value into every register, um, yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, let's do this. Just. Move the value zero into the accumulator, then add right. And if I do the same thing over here, move zero into the accumulator, add left. So I'm just curious. Um, let's try that again. Oh, 
So this value does get distributed in both directions, right? No. Okay, so the one on the left chopped the input. Yeah, so if um, inputs aren't distributed or multiplied, apparently, um, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So JRO. Um. Oh, that's cool. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with assembly code. So, what I'm going to do here... Um, so, add up um, move zero into the accumulator. In between that, move accumulator to the left, move accumulator to the right. And the fault of these on the right and the left to do the correct things. Um. Okay. So this will need uh, add up. The last thing is going to be move zero into the accumulator. Um, and since I don't have two accumulators, now I actually have to do tricky things. Um, save. So it saves the value that was in the input. Oh, hang on. There's a better way to do this. We add right, and then based on what the value of the right is, um, yeah, start. Uh, we're going to grab this block. Um, Wait, can I just... Okay, yeah, move copies of values. So, yeah, we're going to move uh, the instruction into the accumulator. Um, and if we have a negative value... Okay, that's actually really clever, I think. Um, oh, but I have to deal with the case where I have to get their sum. That's a problem. How do I get the sum propagating across this network? Um, Okay, so there's got to be a way to do this. So, yeah, so we, I'm not sure what where my jump commands are going to be. Um, I guess if we're not positive, um, we're going to need to read the value of A.
Whatever, I can't give two descriptive names. Um... Yeah, I can. Uh, we'll just, um... So... We need the sum when it's equal to zero. We need A when it's negative. Non-positive. Oh, wait. Um... Yeah, we'll just say foo. And we'll say start, and last command. Well, obviously these jump back to the start. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, man, I keep confusing myself because I'm acute. I'm. Um, used to having more complex instruction sets available, and this is a lot more primitive. And so I have to try to figure out how to do some advanced memory addition and moving and such techniques um, without the benefit of special instructions which, which both read a value and perform an operation. Um, yeah. I'm used to having a far more complex instruction set available. Um, okay. I thought this would be a lot simpler. Really, I did. Um, uh, so, basically, if this value is positive, jump greater than zero. If um, well, I need to have a label here. If it's equal to zero, or... Um, yeah, this is all problematic. So I'm trying to be really clever and over-optimize this, and I just can't afford to do that. So we're going to move... We're going to, yeah, move up into the accumulator save it, move right into the accumulator, um, and if the value of right uh, is that, and so on and so forth, this actually isn't any easier than what I had going. This is no more optimal. It disappoints me. Okay, it would be possible to optimize this if I had better instructions, but I don't. Oh, maybe I could use a JRO command. doesn't sound very wise either. Okay, well it looks like this one's not subject to the same optimizations. Um, go back to the manual, or back to the puzzle list. So I solved this, there are better ways to... Yeah, it's not even saying there are better ways to do this. There's faster ways to do this, but um, those probably consume more uh, cycles and such. Okay. Sequences are terminated by zeros. Read values from A and B, write the lesser value to out, 
Write the greater value to out. Uh, write zero to end the sequence. So yeah, 4671 becomes 46710. Um, here's in, in, out. So at last things start to get interesting. Um, to determine which is greater, I apparently need to do some math. Um, because there's no assembly commands or no instructions that allow me to directly compare values. Uh, so, we'll make do. This is doable. It's not easy. Okay, we're going to move up into the accumulator in both cases, and then move the accumulator right, um, and then move up into the accumulator, move left, right, move accumulator to right. So now, I've got the sequence of a then B going into this CPU. Um, there's got to be some cleverness. How do I get? Um, it'd be nice if I could get both sequences somehow. Well, we'll let this box figure it out. Um, so, yeah, instruction three is going to be a no op. Uh, in fact, let's, instead of going right, go straight down. down, move up, down, move, zero, down. And this exactly half of the time we'll get the correct value. Okay, or more than half the time. That's cool too. Um, so yeah, the idea is that sometimes the sequence does need to be inverted. Um, There's got to be some way to invert the sequence when desired. Um, I just don't know how. I'm curious though, like what does this look like when running? Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, cleverness here. Move up into the accumulator, save, move up into the accumulator, um, swap because why not. Move accumulator down. Something like this. Pretty close, right? Um, and so yeah, the only question is how do I compare the two numbers and figure out whether or not we need a negative, we need to invert the sequence. Um, I 
There's got to be a way to do it. I don't like the start. I'm going to start over. Okay, and we're going to do like this. isn't hard once you figure it out what the trick is. The trick is repeating uh, the inputs uh, as needed. Okay, G, Z. Okay, we need to have a label up here to restart. Not positive. Um, okay. Missing operand. Hang on, this needs to say jump start. Okay, if we're positive, um, meaning that left exceeds right, then we need to print out the lesser value first. Right, down, move left, down. Else, we need to do these instructions in the other order. And just say, move up, down, do that here, and bam. Got it right exactly once. Well, close enough. Um, up, down, move up, down, move, zero, down. And there we go. I'm curious how this could be optimized. Okay, so that's a good middle-of-the-road approach. Could do better, could do worse. In terms of cycle counts, it's okay. In terms of node counts, yeah, I used five nodes. Maybe there's a way to do it with four. Um, in terms of instruction counts, yeah, I'm doing as well as anybody else. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's pick a different segment. A sequence counter. Oops. Just, uh, let's start with that. Sequences are zero terminated. Read from in, write the sum to s, write the length to l. That's interesting. Oh, zero terminated sequence. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay. I'm trying to figure out, is there any trick here? Which is kind of a silly way to approach it. Um. Yeah, writing the sum down here and the length down there. Uh, well, let's just start with the obvious. Move up, down. There's, yeah, we'll optimize this in a little bit. I see a way that could be done, but I'm not a fan. Okay, we'll do it what the first way that comes to mind first. Um. <laughs> it's funny that sum is on the left and length is on the right. Because it would be, frankly, it would be a little bit easier to do it the other way around. Um. So... Okay, so we're going to repeat the value twice, once so it can get propagated to the right, uh, and once so we can add it. Actually, we've got to move this, got to copy this value three times. That's what's got to happen, I think. So first we gotta make sure this on the right gets the value. Um, so move left into the accumulator. Um, jump non-zero back to start. Uh, okay, so anytime we have a value other than zero, we just go back to the start after getting that accumulated value. Um, and if we do get a zero, we print out the accumulated value. Do I have to repeat the input a second time? I think so. There's no way to add backed up value to, yeah. Again, I've only got one register and one backup register to work with. It's very limiting. Um, yes, yeah, so I actually have to copy. This is silly. Okay, so to duplicate my inputs because I don't have enough registers to do fancy things. Uh, that's okay. Uh, jump non zero start. La, 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 la. Yeah, so I have to um, swap to get my backup value back into the accumulator. I mean, swap is a little overkill here. I just need to use BAK to. 
Oh, through save and swap. So, so yeah, apparently swap swaps the values in the registers. Um, that's cool. That'll work. Just thinking that was more expensive or complex than it needed to be, but there's no better way to do it. Um, Okay, yeah. Duh. Um. Uh, command to save a value into the backup register is SAV. Okay, so basically we're going to add the values in the sequence. Oh, hang on. Um. So we don't need to add the value, we just need to add one. Um, and here we need to move the value from the accumulator uh, out and set the accumulator back to zero. Right, so yeah, for the length we actually don't need the input twice because we don't need the value of. Um, as long as we're getting non zero values, we just keep adding one as opposed to adding something that depends on the value. Uh, unfortunately, this is all really challenging to explain. If there are questions, I'll do my best to answer. I do like this game. Um, so yeah, each time, oh, hang on, yeah, the length of sequence, uh, yeah, that's not right, uh, move the accumulated value down, move, zero into the accumulator. Uh, and then save, I guess. Okay, so if we got a non-zero value, um, then this means we need to add one to our accumulator. Yeah, I think this is accurate on the right. This keeps track of the length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that, that works. Um, Do I at least get... Uh, no. I am way off. I am so far off. That's hilarious. Um, okay. How does this fail? How is this failing, I wonder? So if we're not getting a zero value... Um, okay, so I move the left value into the accumulator, swap it with the backup register, add one, save. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, these commands are not in the correct order. Um... Okay, well we're counting the length of a sequence, right? So let's start um, by adding one to the length of the sequence, swapping, and then doing this kind of comparison. 
Although we don't need that there. We just need to save. Okay, here's what we need to do. There, that's how we keep track of the value of a sequence, or the length of a sequence. We take it out of the backup register, add one to it, put it back into the backup register, and see, do we have a value that's zero? And if it's a zero, then um, we keep going, but else we start over and keep adding one. Down here, we subtract one and print out the value. <laughs> that was close. Um, I have to get the value back out of the backup register in order to print it out. That was close. Ish. Not really. Um, yeah, there's. Okay, I actually don't like that at all. Let's go back. Um, yeah, we'll use this block over here. Up into the accumulator. Move. Oops, not up. We're going to move left into the accumulator. Move the accumulator down twice. Okay. Uh, start by moving accumulator to the right. We'll deal with the rest of this later. Um, trying to minimize my number of cores and that just gets really complicated. Okay, let's try this again. Two, zero, and termination. Um, obviously this is going to print uh, incorrect values. Let's just um, move up into the accumulator. Hey, I got zero correct once. That's it's better than nothing. Um, or is it? Okay, we'll try. Uh, I mean, try keep this as simple as possible. Um, Yep, yep. Let's try that out. I got a single correct value. Gotta give me credit for that. Um, so what's wrong with this? These initially have values of 0 and 0 in the accumulator and the backup register. Um, so take 0, add 1 to it, put it back, Take the input value. Oh. I don't need the input value twice. Let's try that. I think that's my problem. Yeah. Now I need my subtract one command. I'm doing this anything but instructively. Okay. Problem solved, right? Am I right? So we got the correct values for length. We're still missing the values of the sum. Um, but I think you guys can imagine how this works, right? Okay, see, we're able to get the uh, length here. Now let's just get the sum correct. So instead of adding that, 
going to add up. Um, and since that takes a little bit longer, we'll do it this way. No. Yeah, this propagates a greater distance, we'll do it that way. Um, actually, this might run fastest if I do it like so. <laughs> I don't need the subtract one command here, now do I? Run! There we go. It's black magic, guys. There are ways to do this with fewer buses. Um, it would probably scare most people how it's doable. Yeah, this is probably your typical solution. Yeah, smack dab in the middle on cycle count statistics, node counts, and instruction counts. Um, there might be more efficient ways to do it. Almost certainly, there must be more efficient ways to do it. Like if I routed, no, if I were to route this way, I would use an additional CPU socket, which seems quite silly. Why would I do that? Um, I don't think that's my hurdle. How is it possible? Well, yeah, it's, this actually seems really tricky to optimize. I'm just puzzling over, like, there must be a way to do it, but how? Something that relies on some mathematical properties. Um, such as, like, adding zero doesn't change the sum, or things like that. It's probably involved in uh, some kind of micro-optimization here. Yeah, 329 cycles. It's okay, I'm not too happy with that, but... Um, did do well on instruction count. Um, there's got to be a way to do better. Some, some way that involves perhaps less swapping. Um, like, especially in this uh, out.l register where I'm adding one and subtracting one. That seems kind of silly. How long does it usually take to clone the Lila repository? Uh, to clone just that one repository or yeah. everything it depends on? Um, like, you're yeah. just talking about the initial clone command, I think, yeah. and not the recursive submodule thing. Although it might be doing that too. Oh, uh, I don't know. It, like, it took me about a number of minutes. Okay, um, so I shouldn't worry about it. It's like four minutes in. Yeah, you notice, like, I, I made. There's a verbose argument you can pass in while cloning. Yeah. Yeah, I did, but, um, yeah. there's got to be a way to cut out this sub-1 here. Oh! <laughs> Here's a trick. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's put the sub-1 at the start, before the start command. And then move negative 1 into the accumulator. actually one additional command to do that, but it reduces the cycle count slightly. 
Um, yes, let's run that. Oh, I got it incorrect. Wait. How did... How is that incorrect? How did that happen? Uh... Move minus two into the accumulator? Oh. Hang on. Let's try that. There we go. It's ever so slightly faster, and a few more instructions. Three hundred twenty nine cycles. Three hundred nineteen cycles. Okay, so I slightly increased my instruction count. My cycle count didn't actually improve. Hmm. That's weird. That's really weird. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just go back to my older version of the code, which had one extra cycle per loop. Um, be happy with it. Oh, maybe I could in, in, add some cycles. If, maybe there's some way to pipe the data faster. I'm still at 329 instructions. Um, maybe I can, or two or three or 20 cycles. Maybe if I move to the accumulator and then move down a few times, this could distribute. It's probably what I'm supposed to do. Um, say like, uh, actually, that doesn't do anything. Uh, Weird. Because anything I do to repeat the values can't be done more efficiently here. Um. How do I pipe the data faster? Well, okay. Let's do the one thing I was thinking about here, um, which is we don't need this core. Um, we just need to start with a move command that copies the data to the right. Instead of referencing up here, we say left. Okay. There we go. That saves us a core. Our CPU. Um, it did increase the cycle count. It reduced the core count and the uh, um, instruction count. Didn't it? And I think instruction count is slightly up actually. Okay, instruction count's still at 25. Cycle count's pretty high. Node count's a bit lower. Um, so that's cool. There's trade-offs, no matter how you do it. Read a value from in, compared to the previous value. 
If it's changed by 10 or more, write 1. Uh, otherwise, write 0. First input is always 0. Or first output is always 0. Um, Okay. So yeah, if I just say move up, down, and then try copying this, and copy it. Oops, I did not copyright. Move up, down, move up to the right, and try to put all my commands in here. That would be hilarious. Um, move left to the accumulator, um, sub left. Do I have an absolute value command? Probably not. Yeah, there is no absolute value command. That would be too advanced. This is going to need to do something tricky here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to keep track of the two previous values. Yeah, this is okay. Here we go. See how well this does. Yeah, some of the time it's right. Okay. Well, that solves that puzzle. <laughs> it's right, except when it's wrong. That was good fun. Um. Okay, but seriously, how how do I manage this? Um, I need to keep track of the last two values. Um, Okay, so let's start by moving up into the accumulator. Uh, save that. Uh, move the accumulator down, and move it down once more. So this re that's an input repeater. So it inputs a value, dumps it out twice. Um, uh, you missed my previous implementation here. So this reads the input and prints out zero. And you know, some of the time it's right. I have no idea what's going on. Dude, it's assembly code. Um, so, um, this takes input from the inline tries to pipe it through this network of CPU chips and get the correct values going out the outline or out bus. Hmm. And these are the parameters of the problem. Here it's just asking me to keep track of whether the two values differ by 10 or more. And if so, print 1, else print 0. Hmm. 
Um, okay. So I got my input repeater on the input side, and here I need to. Um, Okay, so this is first output is always zero. So we need to print out zero first. Uh, um, and then we need to move the left value into the accumulator, back it up, move the left value, or subtract the left value into the accumulator um, and this is where things get tricky um, so They differ by ten or more. Print out a one. Um, okay. Now, obviously, this is wrong. What this does here is it'll take the value, uh, the input value, put it in the register accumulator, copies the value of accumulator into backup register. Um, subtracts the value of the input, which is the number repeated again. Um, actually, we need to have one more dummy instruction here. Um, move first input um, into nil. I think that'll work. So, yeah. So it checks for the number and the number before it, which are going to be the values, uh, well, the difference will be stored in accumulator here. And it checks, is that difference zero? And if so, jump to the zero label here and execute these two lines and just print out zero. Else, if the difference is non-zero, print out one and go back to the start of this loop. Now the problem is that I need it to figure out do the numbers differ by 10 or more? Not are the numbers identical? So this is only going to be mostly wrong. That points for trying. I'm actually surprised that that isn't more incorrect. Oh, that's printing out 1 virtually all the time except if the two inputs are equal, and then it's printing out zero. Okay, so it does exactly what it, I advertised it would do, but what it, I advertised was wrong. Nice. So, yeah, I'll have to give this some more thought, come back to it some other time. It's an interesting puzzle. Um, maybe come back to this and have this going in the background or something like, wow, some coding session or something's going on, you know? So this provides a nice ambience. Um, so yeah, to all one of you watching, thanks for watching. And I'll see